I'm an archaeologist first. It's been my passion since I was in grade school, and I used to pass notes to my friends written in hieroglyphs. <laughs> I'm a cancer survivor second. At the age of 22, I was diagnosed with a rare and aggressive form of ovarian cancer. But instead of cancer being the end-all be-all, it became a catalyst. It allowed my dreams to blossom into an idea rooted firmly in human biology, culture, and history. And let me tell you how that happened. I was an undergraduate studying archaeology at Pacific Lutheran University. I had just finished months of chemotherapy, my second field season in the Valley of the Kings, and another major surgery. I was bald and I was limping. My mind was still fuzzy with chemo brain, but I still remember the reactions of everyone on campus. Looks of confusion, fear, sympathy, pity. But what happened next is a testament to the antisocial academic I'd become. Instead of feeling self-conscious or embarrassed by their reactions, I thought immediately, well, I wonder what sort of reactions ancient Egyptians with cancer got. <laughs> and then, why haven't I heard about cancer in antiquity? So I collected every ancient medical text I could. I compiled the references to cancer, and the evidence was staggering. Cancer not only existed in ancient societies, but it had a real presence in history. Physicians from ancient Greece, Rome, Europe, uh, Greece, Rome Egypt, and the uh, Arab world all referenced cancer as early as 1500 BCE. And archaeological evidence shows cancer in human skeletal remains as early as 6000 BCE. Now, there are bits and pieces of research, but uh, there's no synthesis of the data. So I, I got together every medical text I could, um, and I looked into the archaeological evidence of cancer and created a database. And I found 230 plus cases in antiquity on six different continents. Now, when I sorted that data using different variables, I came across some interesting patterns. And here's one example. The older you are, the more your cells have a chance to reproduce, and the higher probability of those cells mutating and becoming cancerous. And that's why we associate cancer with older age today. But in the past, we're finding that a high number of middle-aged adults were developing cancer. And this raises some interesting questions. To answer questions like these, we need to be actively learning how cancer changed in the past. During big impact events in history like the Industrial Revolution and the use of tobacco. Now, are these changes reflected in the ancient DNA and cellular mutations like the BRCA mutation linked to breast cancer? Can we identify biomarkers of the disease like the CA125 protein used to detect ovarian and endometrial cancers today? So the field of paleoencology is a small one. It's made up of a select few researchers who've given their limited time to a few, few case studies. That's why a few colleagues and I got together in 2012 to put together the Paleoencology Research Organization. Um, and if you think about it, the impressive advancement of cancer research, it's been based on a limited amount of knowledge over the last 100 years or so. But imagine if we had data documenting cancer over thousands of years. It could reveal how and why it manifests in some and not in others. It could tell us what biological, cultural, and environmental factors influence our human tendency towards cancer. And it could help with the prevention and treatment of cancer in the future. Now, the Paleo-Oncology Research Organization was formed as a collaborative union of archaeologists, historians, clinical oncologists and other scholars that have come together to dig into the global history of one of the world's most prevalent and tragic diseases today. I'm an archaeologist first. It's been my passion since grade school when I used to um, pass notes to my friends written in hieroglyphs. But by studying the past of cancer, we can understand a disease today I'm a cancer survivor second, and as a survivor, I intend to give voice to those affected by cancer in the past so that we can help those affected in the future. Thank you very much. <laughs>